What's up, YouTube AP Human Geography students? It's Coach White. It's second semester, it's unit five, and my first topic I'm gonna to talk to you about <clears throat> are these two, economic activities and the von Thunem model. So let's get going. First, what are economic activities? You should know that this is how people make money. And I know you're thinking, this is unit is about farming, Coach White. Yeah, farmers wanna make money too. So there's this hierarchy of economic activities that are tied to different, what we call economic sectors. At the bottom, we start with primary. This is a group of people who do some sort of work with uh, farming or mining or fishing or lumbering. You're taking something from the ground, the sea, the earth, and you're extracting it. All right. So if you're in the primary sector, you're probably a farmer, a fisherman, a lumberjack. What? All right. Above that, don't get too cute. It's called secondary. This is where you take that raw material and turn it into a finished product. All right. So maybe you take the log and turn it into a table. All right. That's secondary. This happens at a factory. Above that is a hard word, tertiary. Tertiary sector has to do with services. So you're not technically producing anything. You're providing a service like you're cutting hair. Or in this instance, maybe you're moving the table or selling the table, uh, something like that. The next two are also part of tertiary, but they're highly specialized. That's quaternary and quinary. And quaternary and quinary you rarely get asked about. They are part of tertiary, but a quaternary would mean like maybe you work with logistics. Uh, how do we move the table most effectively? And quinary would be maybe you're into research and development. All right. So now this is nice and cute, but let's apply it to something real. All right. You all know Coach White's favorite things are polar sparkling water and IKEA. So. We have our primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary, and quinary. Let's apply this to IKEA, all right? So IKEA furniture is mostly made out of wood. So maybe you're a lumberjack, you're working down here with the timber reserves. Then do people want to buy a tree? No, people want to buy a table. So what has to happen is the lumberjacks cut down the logs. They're working the primary. The logs get to the factory or mill. This would be the secondary sector. So now IKEA is milling this wood from logs into Ooh, functional chairs at a very valuable price, all right? Then the tertiary sector would be a few, all right? How did these chairs and logs get there? Well, you have to have shipping. So the truck drivers, they, they would be shipping. And the actual storefront here would also be tertiary. They're not making anything, but that's where you go to buy the uh, these chairs, all right? Now, quaternary and quinary, we could get into it with IKEA. We could see this would be a, a, an IKEA distribution hub, right? I don't know where this is, somewhere in Sweden, maybe somewhere in America. And then quinary would be the research and development, okay? So these people, right, would be into like, how do you make the chair more functional? How do you make the chair faster? How do you make the chair stronger? Things like that, research and development, R&D, all right? So now you understand your economic activities. And, but maybe, maybe you like that drip, okay? All right, I got you. So let's do diamonds. <clears throat> all right, so diamonds come from the earth. That would be a primary. They mine them out of the earth, it looks like this. This is an African diamond mine. Oh, Tiffany, I see you, okay. Secondary would be, well, do people want to buy this? No, that looks like a gross rock. I want something nice and shiny. So the processing plant, that is where you turn a raw diamond into a finished diamond. We also have our tertiary right here because how do the diamonds get from the mine to the processing plant? Well, on a truck. And then where do you buy the diamonds? You go to Tiffany's at the mall, all right? And you get this. So it's how do we take this raw good and get it from there to there? That's economic activities. That's also our crisp, refreshing, ice cold moment of the notes today brought to you by Polar. Sponsorship pending. All right, so now back to farming. So we see our economic activities. Farming is in the primary sector. And we'll notice there's basically, there's a lot of different types of farming, but we can see there's generally gonna be subsistence agriculture and commercial agriculture. These two are very much extreme. <clears throat> and subsistence agriculture, when your teacher says this, that means that you are only <clears throat> um, trying to produce enough food or enough goods to keep your family alive. We find this mostly in LDCs. You should remember this acronym means less developed countries. They're generally located along the tropics, all right? So these middle latitudes. And in subsistence agriculture, because there's a lack of technology, you have to have a higher population percentage working in agriculture, okay? So there's less machines, so people have to do more of the work. So we see here, right, this guy in uh, South India is having to do a lot of work by hand and with the use of animals, all right? The farms are generally smaller, and the lack of technology makes it difficult to farm for more people, all right? 
The opposite of this would be called commercial agriculture. And commercial agriculture is typically done in MDCs. We see at these higher latitudes, Europe, North America, other parts of the world. And the difference between commercial and subsistence, commercial is mass production, profit, profit, profit. You're probably not consuming what you're growing. You're probably also doing what's called monocropping, which means you focus on one crop, mono, one crop, and you're using a lot of machinery. Okay, so we can see these tractors in here. This uh, tractor is spraying probably some fertilizer or pesticide or herbicide on here. Uh, and the machines make it much easier where this one farmer right here can farm for thousands of people. All right. So that's the difference here. So we're looking at these are both in the primary sector. But you got to think in a more developed country, there's less farmers because since this guy has a, um, a tractor, he can farm for lots of people. Whereas back here in the less developed, because this farmer does not have as much technology, more people have to farm. So that's called agricultural density. So if there's more people farming, that generally tells you that there is a less developed country. If there's less people farming, that probably tells you it's a more developed country. So we have that inverse proportion. Now let's look at some actual numbers. I got two countries here, Canada and Guatemala. <clears throat> and Guatemala and Canada both have farmers, right? Both Every country is going to have farmers. <clears throat> and in Guatemala and in Canada, we see that the percent of the gross domestic product that comes from primary sector is 23% and Canada is 2%, which means that not a ton of the, the sell, sold goods in the market are coming from this area. We can also see that half of Guatemalans are in some sort of farming agricultural sector, whereas only 3% of Canadians, and it's similar in America. I think 2% of Americans farm, 98% do not farm. And if you look here at the tertiary sector, remember that means services, it's kind of what we expect, right? So how are people making money? If they're not making money in the, uh, the labor force, they've got to be offering services, okay? Now, what these numbers tell us is as, as jobs go higher and higher up this economic development, you get better and better salaries. So if a country has a predominant or high amount of agricultural uh, density, then you know that they probably have lower salaries. And if a country has mostly tertiary and service industries, they probably have higher salaries. Now, what do they have in common? All right. So they're both creating agricultural goods, but Guatemala is using what's called a periphery process. And you'll learn that phrase later on with development. But it means that basically they have less technology and a higher hand labor force. Whereas Canada has a high mechanization, which is known as a core process. They have fertilizers and they have GMOs. They have research and development. They have high yield seeds. They have, you know, sophisticated um, irrigation. So the periphery lacks technological support, and the core countries use high mechanization. And that's what allows for there to be very few farmers to feed a high population, whereas in Guatemala, they have to have more farmers to feed the population. So that's what the numbers tell us, okay? So this is MDC versus LDC processes. So in an MDC, there's very few farmers because of this, right, high tech. In an LDC, there's a lot, much larger agricultural density, how many farmers are on the land. Sometimes you'll see it called intensive and extensive. And when you hear these words, intensive just means there's a large amount of energy being pushed into the land and they're trying to squeeze as much productivity and production out of the land. So we can see here, they're high yield sprinklers, right? Uh, hormones and antibiotics and these, uh, these corn feed for, to, to get as much chicken as possible. We see these herbicides. Extensive means it's kind of like open land, free roaming, and there are going to be uh, less inputs on the front end and less out output on the back end, but it's extensive. So intensive means it's you're using a lot of um, a lot of effort that goes into it. We see here this rice paddy. A ton of effort has been put into transforming this hillside into a rice paddy. A ton of effort, right? Sometimes the effort's done by machines. Sometimes this is done by hand. Doesn't really matter. Intensive means the same thing. It's a large amount of inputs. All right. And the last thing I want to look at is, speaking of farmers and processes, a man named Johann von Thunen. And what he decided in 1826 is he wanted to see why do farmers farm differently at different distances from a city? So he noticed that all farmers are motivated for profit. And this is also before the Industrial Revolution took full flight. Okay, So these are the assumptions we need to make, that the land's all pretty much even. It's equal. It's not like there's swamps and deserts and mountains where there's snakes, snakes, and more snakes, okay? All the land is arable. All the land is arable, and farmers are trying to maximize their profit. And he came up with this model. It looks like a bullseye, and you're going to have a bullseye just like that crisp, sparkling, refreshing uh, polar 
right, beverage we're going to have later, okay? And Johan realized that everyone lives here in the city's, the city's center. And as you rotate outward, the process has changed for agricultural purposes. So we're in the primary sector. So the type of agricultural uh, processes going on in sector one would be the growing of fruits and vegetables and the creation of uh, milk products like cheese and milk. And the reason they have to take place so close to the city is because once they're picked or harvested or the milk or the cheese is made, they start to spoil and they'll go rancid quickly. Sometimes it's called the milk shed. So if you were to do this too far away, by the time you got to the market, it would go bad. Level two has the forest. This is what fuels the city, right? They're built uh, out of the the they're built out of the lumber. They they run their houses. They heat their houses. They 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 light their houses with the fuel of that. So this fuels the city. So everyone lives in the city. Closest ring, they're growing fruits and vegetables, and they're milking cows. The third ring, they need more space. So it's more extensive. So we see highly intensive close here. We see extensive further away. This would be stuff like corn and wheat. They need more room to grow. Uh, there's probably some fertilizer put on that. You don't want to use fertilizers uh, near your house. That's bad for you. So you want to keep it kind of further away. Plus these crops, if you cut them, they can stay. Uh, they don't. They don't spoil as quickly. And in the furthest ring, it's pretty extensive. And you got to also think this is where your animals are, your livestock. Because you don't want animals too close to the center of the city because animals produce a lot of waste. They're loud. They're dirty. Uh, and once they, they're brought to market, you can walk your animals in, if they're cows, to sell them. All right. And beyond this, beyond this dash line, you have what's called the wilderness. And the wilderness is scary, y'all. And the people that do live in the wilderness, they're so far away from the city, the city markets here that it's not even profitable to make uh, any type of product. They need to find some other mode uh, or economic sector. So these are all primary sector. We can see the intensive near the center, right? The higher yield land, uh, the higher cost land. And then we see extensive outside of that. All right. This is if you need to hit pause, you didn't understand everything. You can look at all the, the rings, but it's basically I, I've highlighted this already. So maybe hit pause, read it, take some notes. This will help you out. I'm a visual person, so I like this, but some people like this. And the last thing, does it still apply today? Well, if we look at A, this is like kind of what America would look like under a perfect example of the Von Thunem model. You can see not exactly uh, applicable today. This is what it would have to kind of look like. This is what it w actually looks like. So we can see that because of globalization, because of refrigeration, because of mass transportation, we don't have to follow the rigidity of this model anymore because back then it was like wagons and foot and horse, right? Today, we have you know, these tr drones, we have trucks, we have rail lines that can move everything, but you can see that a little bit of this model still applies today with von Thunem. All right, I hope this was helpful in learning about economic sectors, primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary, and quinary, and von Thunem model. Go make that three, four, five, y'all.